Hi guys, this is Toddy Full, and for today, we're going to review the Warfdale Evo 4.2 speakers. Warfdale is quite well known for very decent budget speakers, but not so much for the higher end ones, so when they announced the 4,500 pounds edition 2, my first thought was, would buy Warfdale's at that price? Well, I certainly won't, but I was about to get the Linton from my dealer when he brought out the Evo 4.2s, which was at the price point I was more willing to experiment on. And when I listened to it, I thought it sounded better than the Linton with Audiolab amps, so I brought it home. This should be a good competitor in the $1,000 US price range. So let's compare to the Bowers and Wilkins 606, the Kef LS50s, but before that, let's take a closer look. These are large speakers, and while it's not as big as the Tecton Impact monitors, they are larger than normal and definitely need heavy stands. This is a true three-way speaker with everything above 3.9 kHz handled by the Air Motion Transformer tweeter, and the 6.5-inch Kevlar woofer below 1.4 kHz. And this extra large 2-inch soft dome takes care of everything in between. The veneer finish looks quite nice and surprisingly you have curved enclosures which is rare at this level. At the back, you have biampable binding posts and just in case you didn't notice, the positive terminals are on the left side, so that's kind of reversed from what you usually have. And then you have the rear port. Um, well, it does look like a sealed unit, but the slot is actually at the bottom, hidden by the plinth. Overall, nicely done Wharfdale, and they certainly look the part of more expensive speakers. First, we compare it to its main competitor, the Bars and Wilkins 606, using a 120 watt amplifier, the Class G Arcam A39. For my test tracks, it was mostly even with bass intensive songs and orchestra going to the Wharfdales, while songs focusing on vocals tend to be better in the Bowers and Wilkins. Being on the warmer side, it tends to pick up the smaller details easier than the 606. Despite being the larger speaker, the Wharfdales don't go as low as the Bowers in my room, but they are louder and they are quite satisfying. They are a bit pumped up, but in a nice way unless you're looking for total accuracy. The mids are a bit thicker in the Evos, and there's a longer decay that I'm used to, quite similar to prolonged decay in horns, but they do lend to a more 3D sound imagery and layering, which is simply fantastic. Similarly, vocals are rich and fatty and has that 3D image, but they tend to sound a bit compressed and slightly more nasal. I would say the vocals in the 606 sounds more natural to my ears. Male vocals can get away with it, but female vocals are really noticeable. The highs are silky smooth, as expected of AMTs, and doesn't come off as too sharp or as brilliant as the 606. But there's a lot more details in the EVO 4.2s if you care to listen. Still, some will find the more prickly highs to be better rendered in the 606, especially with cymbals and percussion. The soundstage, however, is quite superior in the EVO 4.2s being taller, wider, and deeper, and combined with that 3D imagery provides a substantial amount of layering that makes orchestra sound particularly delightful. The more natural decay in the 606 does lend to a clearer, more solid image. Choosing between the two is difficult. They have different characters and I feel that a group of people would like the Wharfdales better than the 606, and another group would prefer the 606. So I'll just start by saying the best use case for the Wharfdales are listening to classical music, or maybe if you've heard the 606 and you don't find it resolving enough and you want a little bit more complexity in your listening pleasure, the Wharfdales are your speakers. The Wharfdales are warm speakers and I didn't find them too laid back, but those seeking excitement would be better off going with the 606. 
do try to listen to it and see how you feel about the female vocals because I think that would be the weakest link of the Evo 4.2s. And the 606 would be a better jack of all trades or a better all around speaker. Next, we compare it to my reference Kef LS50s using the shit Ager. Similar to the 606 comparison, I would still go with bass intensive tracks and orchestra in the Evo 4.2s, but otherwise, the LS50s will come out on top of everything else. Bass is louder in the Evo 4.2s, and while the LS50s does sound tighter, the Evo 4.2s sound tight enough for it not to matter. Mid-range and vocals are nicer in the LS50s, not having that compressed sound and having a bit more agility. Piano notes have better timbre and doesn't sound lagging. Highs are also more pronounced in the LS50s, and yet it still reveals the same amount of details you can hear in the warmer Evos. Though the Evos will be a lot more forgiving in some songs and systems, especially in non-treated rooms. Soundstage is tremendously large in the Evos and also provides a better layering of instruments which sometimes come out flat in the LS50s in more complex arrangement. Clarity is better in the LS50s, especially in start-stop situations. I would rate the KEF LS50s just slightly higher than the Evo 4.2s and if I find them in the same price, I would go for the LS50s with just a hint of hesitation. If you're looking for warmer speakers with better bass, a super layered soundstage, and don't mind losing the more natural sounding vocals, then you'd do well to give the EVO 4.2s a listen. What I like the most about the EVO 4.2s is the soundstage. It's taller, deeper, and wider than most of its competitors, and the separation and layering is just insane. There's tons of details that's easily noticed, and... The bass is quite nice and satisfying combined with that smooth air treble and you have a warm, relaxed, engaging speaker that you can listen to for days without getting fatigued. What I don't like about the EVO 4.2s is that it still cannot do 40Hz. I know it's a stretch that the bookshelf can go that low and most of its competitors can't anyway, but what's the point of going bigger if you can't go deeper, right? And also, the decay is a bit longer than I'm used to, but I guess it helps give that holographic feel if that's what they're after. And what annoys me also is the binding post at the back. And apart from being reversed, it's also angled at a 45 degrees, which makes inserting banana plugs a bit harder and more annoying. And I don't see any benefit in doing so. What I hate about the EVO 4.2s is the vocals, particularly female vocals. Honestly, I didn't really notice when I was breaking them in because I was listening to a lot of orchestra pieces and I was really enjoying the speakers. I thought to myself, this would kick the 606 out of the top spot. But after comparing it to the LS50s and even the 606, it's easily noticeable how more natural and effortless the other speakers are. I also tried it in my larger living room, which is untreated but a bit larger and it has the same effect. So it's really the character of the speaker. And it's not that the vocals are bad or anything. They're actually quite fine if you don't compare it to anything. I just find the shame because the speaker is almost perfect and so please give give it a try listen to the vocals see if if it's okay with you because for me it's not and i've been audio bold large like a hawk sings like a dork thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you have any comments or suggestions just write down below if you haven't subscribed yet please do and see you in the next video.